Big knee. Part two. Nate, just the kiddo I'm looking for. Miss Hickson greets me as I step into the library. I just added some fantastic books to our graphic novels collection. They're right up your alley. I feel like telling her nothing's right up my alley these days. The way my looks going, if I ended up in an alley, I'd probably get mugged. Uh, thanks, but I'll have to look in at them later. I say, I've got to do some social studies first. Really? Her eyebrows practically pop off her head. Well, by all means, Nate, go right ahead. Nice. Does she have to look so shocked? I may not be Joe Scholar, but I like never come here to do classwork. It only seems that way. Favorite library activities. One, table football. Kicking off. Plunk. Ow. Thumb wrestling. One, two, three, four. I declare thumb war. Three, beanbag Olympics. Cowbunga. Do you have any stuff I could look about the war of 1812? I ask if as if I really care. I just might, she answers. Let me see what I can find. She bustles off to who knows where. Maybe she's checking the boring books that nobody wants to read section. Anyway, looks like I'm here at the right time. When Hickey's in a good mood, like now, she's actually pretty nice. But like all teachers, she definitely has a dark side. I've seen her get pretty mad, not Godfrey mad, but she's on the chart. Now she's back with a book the size of a stack of lunch trays. Here you go. Oof. Thanks a lot. I can see the headline now. Boy crushed by a giant book. I don't know about you, but I try to avoid reading stuff that weighs more than I do. It has all the info I need, though. It only takes me 20 minutes to rewrite my outline. I'm getting ready to leave when... Oh, no. Look at this, everybody. It's Jenny and Arthur, PS 38's most popular couple. Aren't they sweet? Aren't they adorable? Aren't they sickening? Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Jenny is sickening. She's completely awesome. I know a little something about awesomeness. No, what grosses me out is seeing the two of them together slobbering all over each other like a pair of lovesick puppies. Okay, so they're a couple. Fine. Do they have to be obnoxious about it? That's so funny, Pookie Bear. Did she just call him Pookie Bear? Pardon my gag reflex. Arthur's no Pookie Bear. I can come up with way better names for him than that. And I will. Fart Bucket. Piece of Dry Toast. Booger Bunny. Ingrown Toenail. Cuddle Slug. Glass of Warm Prune Juice. Sweat monkey, zit wagon, sad little clown, barfomatic, sand crab, weasel boy, Nate wannabe, pea brain, wussy kins, soon to be former boyfriend. You're probably reading this list and thinking I'm hating on Arthur, but believe it or not, I actually kind of like the guy. He just bugs me sometimes. That's all. And he. And he's Jenny's love puppet. Hi, Nate. Chad, I thought you were playing add-on in the cafeteria. We were, but then some 7th graders started throwing tacos at us. Chad fact. He's small for his age, so his grandmother taught him the same. First to ripen, first to rot. 7th graders are such a pain, I mutter. Tell me about it, Chad. Yes. My hair smells like guacamole now. He pulls up a chair beside me. What are you doing? 
Who? Uh, me? Uh, nothing. I was just about to start a new alternate story. That's all. Ooh, can I be in it? Sure, why not? It's always fun to invent new characters. Make me a si super villain. You? What's so funny, he asks, looking a bit hurt. Chad, no offense, but I don't think you're the superhero type. You're too nice. Yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe I'm more kind of a loyal sidekick kind of guy. Now that's a good idea, I tell him. Alternate could use a sidekick. I start drawing. The Amazing Adventures of, of Alternate, Super 6th Grader, and introducing his dynamic new crime fighting partner, Mega Chad. Chad Beams. Mega Chad. I like that. How about giving me a mask? Okay, I say making a few pencil strokes. Any other requests? Chad doesn't answer right away. And when I look up from the table, I can see that he's blushing. Can you put her in it? Who? Maya, I say surprised. Chad nods shyly, his cheeks now fire engine red. Maybe I could rescue her or save her or something. Then quickly he adds, in your comments, I mean. Wow, this is news. I never knew Chad had a thing for me. All right, trusty sidekick. I tell him, leaning oh, my notebook again. I'll see what I can do. One boring day in the library. I still don't understand the War of 1812. Hmm. If only we could go back in time and study it firsthand. Hey, we can. What do you mean? This is a job for Ultra Nate. And his trusty sidekick, Mega Chad. With our ultra speed, we'll break the time barrier and travel backwards through history. Next stop, 1812. Microseconds later, we're here. That's odd. I don't see any war going on. According to my ultra compass, we should be standing in the middle of the Battle of New Orleans. Help! Help me, hunky mask tear up. Maya, how'd she get here? She was in the library with us. She must have been swept up in the suction of our turbo velocity. Why were you up in that tree? I was hiding from that roar. I'll handle this. Pow! Nab! Fling! Meow! You are amazing. Hold on, something's wrong. That was a saber-toothed swamp cat, a species that's been extinct for over a thousand years. But how is that possible? I mean, if we're in 1812, oh, we're in 1812, all right. 1812 B.C. Yes, that's why we couldn't find the Battle of New Orleans. The city doesn't exist yet. Rumble. So I guess finding a pizza place is out of the question. We've got to get back to our own era. Let's hope we get it right this time, shortly. We made it back into the library. According to my calculations, we've been gone for one week. That means we missed a week of social studies. And your library books are all a week overdue. The end. Wouldn't that be cool, Chad says when he's done reading, having superpowers like that? Imagine being able to fly. We might not be able to fly, but we can do the next best thing, I tell him. Come on. We and go over to the book nook, where a bunch of giant beanbag chairs sit empty in the corner. I do a quick 360 to make sure there's no sign of hickey. Give me a hand, Chad, I whisper. Pile these up. 
Chad looks baffled. What are we doing? Making a crash pad, I tell him. Even Ultra Nate and Mega Chad need a soft place to land. Huh? You're going to jump? <laughs> he asks, his eyes widening. Superheroes don't jump, Chad. I remind him as I scramble off onto a table. We fly. You're not getting me up there. Well, come on. It's fun. And the beanbags are nice and soft. He looks around anxiously, but what if Mrs. Hickson see us? I bend my knees, ready to launch myself into the plow. Chad, relax. Kids do this all the time and never get busted. Hickey's not going to suspect a thing. I guarantee it.